I'm Ruth. And I'm Darren of the Rad Adventures Network, and welcome to Continental Comics. In this series, we're using the word continental as many people would use it when talking about a continental breakfast, which means we're generally talking about comics from the European continent. Many of the comics we plan to cover are from Belgium, where comics are more mainstream than in the U.S. We love comics as a medium and enjoy a good superhero comic, but we're much bigger fans of genres like science fiction, adventure, fantasy, and gothic horror. We love good adventure stories filled with quests and action and mystery and suspense, and European comics are more likely to focus on those types of stories that we really enjoy. So it's an entirely different world of comic stories than you might normally read. Comics in Europe aren't generally printed in monthly issues like in the U.S., but instead are printed in what are called comic albums. These albums are similar to what we call a graphic novel in the U.S., but they're generally printed in a larger format than here in the U.S., which really shows off the art. These comic albums usually range from 50 to 75 pages long, and continuing series might publish one or two comic albums a year. The origins of modern European comics predate U.S. comics and are generally considered to date back to the 19th century. However, examples of illustrations, including text bubbles similar to modern comics, have actually been found in Greece, dating back to the 2nd century. In the past, it was difficult to find European comics outside of Europe, and especially not in the U.S. The expense of translating these comics and then printing them and shipping them just didn't justify the modest sales of these books in the U.S., where Marvel and DC dominate the marketplace with their many titles. The only titles that really came over to the U.S. were hugely popular series, like The Adventures of Tintin and Asterix. However, the explosion of digital comics through apps like Comixology and through the Amazon Kindle has made it much more economical for European publishers to translate their comics into English and distribute them digitally in the U.S. without the cost of printing and shipping. Several major European comic publishers have started distributing their titles this way, including Soleil, Cinebook, Casterman, Europe Comics, and more. And that has made it very easy to collect and read many of these awesome adventures. In this episode, we're talking about The Adventures of Blake and Mortimer by Edgar P. Jacobs, which is celebrating its 75th anniversary this year. It's an adventure series filled with lots of espionage and mystery and occasionally some science fiction. Our friend Ron Randall, who writes and illustrates the original comic series Trekker about 23rd century bounty hunter Mercy St. Clair, that we talk about on our Trekker Talk podcast, once commented to us that the art style and types of plots in Blake and Mortimer remind him of the classic animated series Johnny Quest. We think that's a terrific comparison. So if you're unfamiliar with this comic series, but you're a fan of Johnny Quest, then you just might want to give Blake and Mortimer a try. We hope you'll join us for the conversation right after this promo for another podcast that you might enjoy. The Fantastic Arts is your guide to the Fantastic Four from the beginning of the Marvel Age of Comics. Each week, Steve Lacey and Andy Leyland cover each issue, spin-off, guest appearance and cameo of Marvel's first family. And in 2019, we begin our journey through the neon decade, the 1980s. Join us as we cover... All-time classic runs from John Byrne and Walt Simonson. She-Hulk and Sharon Ventura join the Fantastic Four. The Invisible Girl No More, here comes The Invisible Woman. Spin-off series including Marvel 2-in-1 and The Thing. Marvel's Secret Wars, The Trial of Reed Richards and more. Find us at thefantasticast.com on iTunes and all other podcast services. The Fantasticast. Insert catchy tagline here. Wait, what? The Adventures of Blake and Mortimer was originally created, written, and illustrated by Belgian cartoonist Edgar P. Jacobs. Jacobs was a contemporary of Hergé, and The Adventures of Blake and Mortimer actually premiered in the very first issue of the 1010 comic magazine in 1946. While the series was created and written by a Belgian, the title characters are both British. Captain Francis Percy Blake is from Wales and works for MI5, the British Secret Service. Meanwhile, Professor Philip Angus Mortimer is a renowned physicist from Scotland. The roles of the two main characters make it easy for the series to tell exciting globe-trotting adventures that take our heroes from the streets of London to the catacombs in Paris to the pyramids in Egypt to the lost continent of Atlantis. In some stories, Blake will be caught up in an espionage adventure and will need the help of his friend Mortimer. 
Or in other stories, Mortimer's scientific investigations will lead him to discover some subversive plot, and he'll need to call on his friend Blake. In most adventures, Blake and Mortimer will run into their nemesis, Colonel Ulrich, who is the main villain in the series. He is a spy, a smuggler, a mercenary, or whatever is needed to advance the plot. Interestingly, Ulrich's appearance is based on Jacobs himself, so he's the villain in his own comic series, which is neat to know. Jacobs was born in Brussels in 1904 and studied traditional academics at school at the encouragement of his parents. However, he was always drawing, and he loved live theater and the opera, where he did set decoration and scenery painting. He began to get small parts in operas and later larger parts throughout the 1920s and early 30s, and even won a medal for his classical singing. However, the Great Depression brought his opera career to an end, and he turned his attention to commercial art, and later his first comic art. His big break came when he was doing the set designs and stage painting for a theatrical production of Cigars of the Pharaoh, based on Hergé's story from The Adventures of Tintin. This gave him the opportunity to meet Hergé who then hired him to work as a colorist for the 1010 comic series in the early 1940s. The two became friends, and Hergé would occasionally include him in small parts in the 1010 series. While Hergé did not like opera, he knew Jacobs loved opera, and that led Hergé to create the character of opera singer Bianca Castafiore in the 1010 stories, who would occasionally be accompanied by a character named Jacobini. And later, Hergé would say in interviews that Captain Haddock was partially based on Jacobs' personality. Jacobs had a long and very successful run with the adventures of Blake and Mortimer, publishing new stories until he passed away in 1987. And then later, his estate allowed other teams to create new books in the Blake and Mortimer series. These creative teams have been very respectful of the original stories, and these newer adventures predominantly look and read just like the original stories. These later stories continue to be set primarily in the 1950s and 1960s, when the original stories written by Jacobs were generally set. During his lifetime, Jacobs completed 11 comic albums and was working on a 12th volume when he passed away. The art for that volume was later completed by Bob Demore. The art in the Blake and Mortimer stories uses what is called the clear line style, which is very common in Belgian comics. And Jacobs' work is often complimented for its very cinematic views of cities and landscapes. Here are summaries of a few of the key adventures to give you an idea of what the series is like. The Secret of the Swordfish was the first story and ran from 1946 to 1949. It told a forward-looking story of how the growing Cold War would lead to a Third World War. Because of this setting, the story sort of exists in an alternate timeline from the rest of the series, which was primarily set in the 1950s and 1960s. In The Yellow M, a villain has committed a series of daring heists, including stealing the crown jewels from the Tower of London. However, when several key citizens begin disappearing, Blake and Mortimer must figure out the connection between the thefts and the kidnappings. In The Mystery of the Great Pyramid, Professor Mortimer is going to Cairo, Egypt on holiday when he gets caught up in a mystery involving an ancient papyrus and the apparent murder of his friend, Captain Blake. When Blake and Mortimer are trapped in a cavern in the Azores, they are rescued by the descendants of the lost continent of Atlantis. But they soon learn much more is at stake in the Atlantis mystery. When parts of Europe are hit with a series of weather-related disasters, Professor Mortimer travels to Paris to meet with a friend who is a meteorologist, but a seemingly unrelated car accident might lead him to the real cause of the disasters in SOS Meteors. Following the death of an old adversary, Blake and Mortimer find what appears to be a time machine in the time trap. In the affair of the necklace, a necklace that once belonged to Marie Antoinette is stolen just as it is supposed to be presented to Queen Elizabeth, and it's up to Blake and Mortimer to retrieve it. We're grateful that more than a dozen additional books have been published since Jacob's death. We enjoy those books as well, and enthusiastically recommend them for fans of the series. These creative teams include Jean Von Holm, Yves Sant, Ted Benoit, André Juilliard, and others. There have also been a few adaptations of Blake and Mortimer over the years, including a radio series adaptation of The Time Trap in 1962. And in 1997, an excellent 26-episode animated series was produced. The series is a French and Canadian co-production and features 13 different stories, with each story being a two-part adventure. Eight of the stories were based on the original books by Jacobs. A ninth story was based on the Francis Blake Affair, which was the first book done after Jacobs passed away. The remaining four adventures were original stories created for the animated series. 
It's a terrific show with excellent animation, and it captures the spirit of the original comics very well. We love it. We were lucky to find it on DVD a few years ago and have watched it many times. There have also been several attempts to make a film adaptation of The Yellow Elm, and for a while Hugh Laurie and Kiefer Sutherland were attached to the project to play Blake and Mortimer, but sadly the film version has never happened. The series remains very popular in Europe, and in 2005, a mural of Blake and Mortimer based on the cover of the book The Yellow M was added to the Brussels comic book route. The Brussels comic book route features large murals depicting scenes from some of Belgium's most famous comic books. The murals are painted on the walls of several buildings throughout the inner city of Brussels, and it's wonderful to take a walk through the city to see just how many of the murals you can spot. Besides Blake and Mortimer, there are murals for The Adventures of Tintin, Asterix, The Smurfs, Lucky Luke, The Adventures of Yoko Suno, and many others. We were lucky to see the Blake and Mortimer mural when we visited Belgium a few years ago. There was a construction project in progress nearby, so we couldn't get as close to it as we wanted, but we still felt very lucky to be able to see it. It's really stunning. Blake and Mortimer are also prominently featured in some of the many comic museums in Brussels, including the Belgium Comic Strip Center Museum, and we particularly liked an elaborate display at the Museum of Original Figures that features figures and models from several of the stories. As we mentioned earlier, this is the 75th anniversary of Blake and Mortimer, and to celebrate this occasion, the Royal Mint of Belgium has produced special Blake and Mortimer commemorative coins. The packaging for the coins looks very nice, and you can choose between a regular version of the coin, or a version that's painted, or a version that's made of gold. A very nice item for fans of the series. And I guess that brings us to the end of our discussion. We hope you've enjoyed hearing our thoughts about the adventures of Blake and Mortimer. If you're a fan, we hope we've covered some of your favorite topics. And if you aren't familiar with the series, we hope we sparked an interest and hope that you'll check out the amazing comics or the excellent animated series. Thank you all for listening, and we'll be back with our wrap-up right after this promo from another podcast that you might enjoy. Between the golden age of Atlantis and the rise of recorded history, There were ages undreamed of. Hither came heroes and villains possessing swords and magic, whose deeds became tales and legends. I have come to relate these sagas. Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Days of High Adventure a new podcast discussing a variety of comics that fall into the fantasy or sword and sorcery genre. Available on most podcast services and Anchor FM. Before we go, we want to provide our contact information. You can contact us directly at radadventuresnetwork at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram under the name Rad Adventures Network. That's Rad, R-A-D, which is short for Ruth and Darren. You can listen to our show through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. You can even find the show on YouTube under Rad Adventures Network. You can always visit RadAdventuresNetwork.com where you'll find all of the episodes of all of our podcasts, including Trekker Talk about 23rd century bounty hunter Mercy St. Clair by Ron Randall, Warlord Worlds about the comic creations of Mike Grell, including the Warlord John Sable and Green Arrow, and Xenozoic Xenophiles about the Cadillacs and Dinosaurs series Xenozoic Tales by Mark Schultz. If you like the show, please consider leaving a review. While you won't find a specific place to review Continental Comics, we hope you will leave a review under Rad Adventures Network. Every review helps the podcast be more likely to show up in search results. And on YouTube, we hope you'll subscribe to the channel and give us some likes on the videos. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll come back next time for another new episode of Continental Comics. Rad Adventures Network is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. For more information, please visit comicspodcast.com. The theme music is See Me Now from royalty-free music instrumentals for TV and radio productions. We make no money from this podcast and no copyright infringement is intended.